Welcome back to another video. Today I just thought it'd be good because I haven't made any videos for a little while to talk about Stellaris, where it's been and how it is progressing or looking for 2024. So we've had the Paragons update in 2023. We had the Astral Planes update. And I must say Paragons really threw a spanner in the works with the leader changes that really changed a lot of metas, a lot of gameplay, made size very unbalanced made leaders extremely powerful with certain builds and certain uh, species races and it took some time for paradox to balance that out and i think they've got it nearly right now with quite a few patches over the end of 2023 and we finally reached a state of the game where i think it's back to being pretty good nearly as good as what it was a couple of years ago. Probably not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Then you had the Astral Planes update, and that didn't really go down well with the uh, players. It was overpriced, it didn't offer a huge amount of content, and it was just another expansion really on our archaeological dig sites and just added another. It did add some bit of mid-game content, but it just added some more content that I really didn't think was necessary. It just seemed like it was just something to sell us so they can continue their DLCs and get a little bit more money coming in while they're working on hopefully something bigger and better. So overall, 2023, the end of it, turned out to be pretty disappointing. Now that they've done that beta patch with the technology changes to the game, where we can adjust that in the settings, I think that was a really big improvement. And a lot of the changes they implemented with leaders just made the game so much better. I love how you can make the technology costs. Um, I love to make it extreme, actually, as you can see on the screen here. And it makes the technology cost far more and just take longer to research. It makes the game not just rush through Corvettes, Destroyers, and all that early to mid game tech to try and get to the end game tech with. Um, excellent weapons and mega structures and all that type of thing no you actually actually have to play through build fleets of corvettes destroyers early on use a lot of those early techs and weapons that you've researched it makes researching every pick that you pick for research extremely important so try using this uh, setting and change you may not want to make it extreme tech like i like to pay on you might want to be somewhere in the middle but it does change the game a lot and makes it, I think it makes it a far more realistic in terms of how the game should play out. You just can't skip through so many techs and weapons and ship designs. You actually have to use them because you're not going to reach that end game tech for, for some time unless you've um, massively increased your research at the expense of everything else. And even then, it's still going to be significantly slower, I'd imagine. Anyway, let's talk about the future 2024 and the announced DLC with the expansion to the machine age and i must say i am really looking forward to this expansion it has been um i guess some time since i've been really excited about what's happening in stellaris and it does really look like this expansion and it is a full expansion finally i think it's been about two years since we've had a full expansion really like paragons it did do a lot of changes in terms of leaders but i for me it doesn't didn't seem like a full expansion so for me this machine age is like this is a full expansion with a lot of content we're getting a lot of changes to uh, machine races we're going to be able to play as individualistic uh, uh, species of machines rather than uh, just salt or a hive mind type um, race so there's going to be three new origins which uh, there are some dev diaries out on. Now, I'm not going to go into all the specific details of um, the origins and civics because Montu's done some great videos on that. You can go and watch some of his videos and I'll explain. This is just a general overview of what is coming. So, we've got the three new origins Cybernetic Creed, Synthetic Fertility, and Arc Welders. We're getting six new civics Guided Sapiens, Natural Design, Obsessional Directive, Protocol Droids, Tactical cog Cogniators and augmented bazaars. So that's uh, a tick there to megacorps. So you can have megacorps, um, cybernetic races or machine races. You're gonna be able to have spiritualists. I'm really hoping to play a spiritualist cybernetic race and be um, a bit like a mix between the Borg but on a spiritualist type of theme. I, I, uh, that really appeals to me. So I would like to try and do that. 
uh, in, in the near future when this comes out. I think probably looks like it's coming around early to mid May, hopefully. That seems to be when all the dev diaries end towards the end of April. So that's what I'm hoping for anyway. We're actually getting two new mid game structures. They're like mid game mega structures or mid structures, they might call them. An arc furnace, which seems to help with, um, uh, with mega structures and being able to increase uh, the, the speed of mega structure construction by the look of it. And Dyson Swarms, which is an early form of your Dyson Sphere, a very, I guess, primitive form of your Dyson Sphere. We're actually adding some more mid-game um, content, which I think is also really good. And just instead of adding some hoops we need to jump to, we can actually build some things to um, spend our resources on rather than fleets and um, have endless fleets of ships and actually got to build, probably spend thousands of alloys into these new mega structures. And we're getting new ascension pass machines, we're getting um, cybernetic and synthetic ascensions to um, unlock, we're getting new species traits uh, for cyborgs, machines and robots, cybernetic portraits are going to be um, added. We're going to be getting two new ship sets. We've just seen one new lower ship set in the last week's Dev Diary. We're getting seven new music tracks. We're getting a new player crisis and a new endgame crisis. And this is what I'm really liking uh, in Stellaris with the addition of some mid-game content and some end-game content. And what I like about this is it's not only adding a new end-game crisis, and it seems to allude that it's like a... Um, an ancient enemy that's awakening that's always been there hiding which i don't know could it be the hunters perhaps yeah i hope they'd sort of link up the story between the fallen empires between the contingency the praetorian um and the unbidden and the, the hunters um that they've alluded to with the the praetorian sort of uh running from i think it was so the mid-game crisis, that seems to be driven by some type of pursuant of lots of technology. Um, I was hoping it would be more on the cybernetic type of thing where you might find like uh, you become like a Borg type race cybernetic and you've got to rampage across the galaxy and you have to turn all the biological races and machine races where well, you have to wipe them out and turn the, the biologicals into cybernetics like the Borg. But it seems to be... Um, I was hoping it would be some type of Borg type of race but it doesn't seem it's going to go down that path. So it's really looking like a really big expansion um, with a lot of content being added in the machine age, which is coming in the next month or so. What I would like to see Paradox do for the future, it's been a gripe of mine for a while, is you've got the Fallen Empires. Really, they should be doing so much more with them, with the interaction between the Empires, having events and more wars. Um, with them trying to uh, in interact and keep the, the new upstart empires from becoming superpowers and snowballing and there should be some more interaction in there where if they detect other empires are getting perhaps getting too strong that they actually take action against them and they're having wars and there should be more events which trigger the fallen empires actually intervening in the galaxy uh, more often perhaps not waking up but just sending their fleets out Rather than actually humiliate, they might actually like go and like, let's just destroy that world. Give them some planet crackers and stuff. Let's go destroy that world or, or um, shield that world or turn it into a water world or whatever, depending on the fallen empire's um, ethics. I do things along, along those lines. That's what I would really like to see. Rather than just constantly adding new things and just slowing the game down even more and more once you get to the late game, let's just tweak what we've got add a bit more content or events more such not so much content but scripted events which can trigger which will create big wars in that mid part of the galaxy create chaos maybe add a new some new mid-game crisis to do with the fallen empires and get them involved in the galaxy earlier so that we have big wars that you're going to fight you're going to lose lots of ships you're going to lose planets and and this will really slow down that um progress into the late game where things can really slow down in terms of the game game speed so i think that would be a lot better and it creates a lot more interaction it builds it builds the law of stellaris the storyline of stellaris the fall empires being more evolved i think they could really there's a, there's a whole section that they've sort of just ignored and they could really flesh that out a lot more 
with Stellaris in the future. So I'm really looking forward to Machine Age. I hope they they do it good and it's released in a good state with not too many bugs and breaking multiplayer and all these desyncs and stuff that always seems to happen on a lot of releases. So get that beta out there, Paradox, and let people beta test it so that we don't have too many too many bugs all the problem release which take weeks or months to fix and then we can't even really play the game as we'd like to and stop adding um uh, content like astral planes we don't really want that that's not really what we need uh we need the game to be uh, ex the content we've already got flesh that out more i, I don't mind having more mid-game mega structures um, more races, more customization is always great between uh, what we can build because that's one of the best things about Slaris is the, the, the endless thousands of combinations you can make for different empires. It really, really is astounding. Uh, I, someone should actually calculate how many you can actually make. I don't, I don't know. There must be, must be tens of thousands of possible combinations that you can actually possibly make. Maybe more. Might be hundreds of thousands really when you factor in all the portraits and all the backgrounds and names and different civics and government combinations must be massive the actual what you can actually do with the game now so i'm really looking forward to this expansion i hope you guys are um that's really it for me for now so 2024 is sort of looking up I'm, i haven't been this excited for Stellaris for a couple of years now probably since they started the combat revamp i thought that was really really good it added a lot of um, extra dimension to the game with uh, the fleets and ship designs and everything like that. I thought that was uh, some of the last really good stuff that was well implemented, in my opinion. And it's been that's been a couple of years now, or 18 months or so. So this is really good to have Stellaris, I think, back on the right track. And I think this is what you've got in this update, Paradox. Continue along this theme and what things I've suggested. Don't give us just you know, gimmicky astral plane stuff. You know, it's it's all right, but you're going to have to sell it at a, a, a cheaper price to get people to pay for it and um, not be really upset with it. Don't sell it as a, uh, a, a full-on expansion or a um, species pack when it, it doesn't really... It, all it does is just an extension of the um, archaeological dig sites, really, with a bit of uh, extra fluff. Anyway, I'll leave it for there rather than rattle on, um, and I'll see you guys shortly in... Um, some playthroughs and multiplayer games. Bye for now.